not being any guaranteed success. You know they're going to have success, like Daniel Radcliffe is having now. He's going to be in his first theatrical film since the Harry Potter franchise finished up. Uh, he's going to be in The Woman in the Black Dress. It's uh, described as a uh, terrifying movie. We're going to see more roles for Daniel Radcliffe to come. So I doubt we're going to see these Twilight stars just vanish and disappear. I think we're going to see more uh, from them theatrically, and we're going to see more from them, if not theatrically, on Blu-ray and DVD, because they are an incredible amount of talents that you cannot put a price tag on. They have got to be worth millions of dollars. Taylor Swift uh, financially is worth $47 million. The Olsen twins back in like 2004 were worth $10 billion each. Uh, so I think that these guys have got to be worth uh, five times that. So I think we're going to see them in more theatrical releases. And as, if not theatrical releases, we're going to see them on Blu-ray and DVD with uh, movie titles dropping all the time. We've seen Robert Pattinson in two or three roles since the Twilight franchise was announced for theaters, so, you know, it, they haven't been very exciting movies uh, that we've seen Robert Pattinson in. The movie uh, Snow White and the Huntsman looks to be more exciting starring Kirsten Stewart than fucking uh, Remember Me or something like uh, with Reese Witherspoon that he did Water for Elephants, which was about a traveling circus and some kind of romance thrown in there with interaction between humans and elephants. Uh, we haven't seen much in the way of an exciting movie role outside of Twilight for Robert Pattinson, but those roles will come. I think he's just getting familiar with the surroundings outside of Twilight. So we're going to see more movies from these guys uh, down the road. Taylor Lautner, definitely, because he seems to be more popular than Robert Pattinson. I'll go ahead and limit and say he's more popular than Robert Pattinson because uh, it seems like he gets a lot of attention on social networks and on uh, media forms to promote stuff. Uh, on the red carpet premiere of a lot of the Twilight movies, he's the first guy they go to uh, for an interview. He's the first guy that shows up on talk shows like Ellen and Regis and Kelly to promote anything with Twilight. I've seen many interviews with him on YouTube. The trailer for this is on our Twitter page at HEW Entertainment Jonathan Clark 1. And some of the key things I touched on here a few months back when I talked about the theatrical release a Twilight Breaking Dawn is that in this one you see the characters change so much from the beginning of the film until the end of the film. They go through a transitional period, each one of the characters do in their own different way, and they change significantly from the beginning of the film until the end of the film. So it's one thing that you have to pay attention to, how much the characters go through from the beginning of the film until the end of the film. I think you'll find it very different from the previous installments of Twilight and I think you'll enjoy it more. And Taylor Lautner was one guy who actually shed some light on that for a piece he did for a number of media forms. And he's right, you know, the characters definitely do change a lot from the beginning of the film until the end. There's more fighting in this one between the werewolves and the vampires, which is kind of unique. And that leads me to believe down the road we're going to see some kind of video game released for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, maybe, because of the fighting uh, that has increased significantly from the previous films to this one, so it's it's really cool to see more action in this, because to be honest with you, we didn't get much action uh, in terms of fighting or killing in the uh, previous installments of the film. We got a bit of it there in Eclipse, a bit of the tense moments uh, developing in the uh, Eclipse one, I believe, and it carried over to Twilight the Breaking Dawn Part 1, of course, and it's more significantly talked about in this one. So we're going to get more fighting, we're going to see the characters change a lot, which is always unique and cool. That it makes it different from, you know, what we've seen before. As I mentioned here in the past, I think that a lot of characters in this film didn't have enough significance. They had bigger roles, but they still didn't have a, a lot of significance. Jessica was one that I used as an example of how much of insignificance she serves to this. It seems like she's kind of just there. And, you know, she's nobody's favorite character, apart from someone like uh, Taylor Lautner or Robert Pattinson, who did a phenomenal job playing Edward and Jacob. So, I think there are a lot of characters in this film that have no significance whatsoever. Bella's father's another one, and the list goes on and on. Some of the vampires actually didn't have significant roles. They had their special abilities. Uh, they were part of the columns, and they, they didn't really do too much. And there were other vampires outside of the columns, too, that were just there, kind of part of a colony or some kind of cult. So there were a lot of characters, a lot of supporting cast members that really didn't have a lot to do with the film theatrically. So those are a couple of downer points uh, about this one. Uh, but I think you're really going to enjoy this one. It's described as the Blu-ray release of the year. 
and we're not even a quarter out of the year yet so uh, definitely something has to show up in top it. Do I think something will be released to top this one? Obviously Breaking Dawn Part 2 is going to have to top it because it's the finale and there's a lot of pressure on the release of this film because it will tell the directors of this movie, the cast members of this movie, if they will land uh, acting roles in the future, if they will land directing deals for the directors and the uh, production staff, uh, if they'll ever get on the board for another movie. A lot of questions up in the air and futures are uncertain because of the release of this uh, film coming up in June. That's just a rumor. I don't have the official date uh, for the release of it, but I think that definitely we're going to see these people back. It's not going to be the end of them when we see the final Twilight release theatrically and eventually released on Blu-ray and DVD. And as I mentioned here at the top of the show, if you have any merchandise uh, and you have any pictures of the merchandise that you have, throw us up a link in our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Jonathan Clark 22. I want to see some of the merchandise that you have. Show me your Twilight collection because I guarantee you a lot of this stuff's going to be worth a lot down the road if it isn't already. Uh, because these characters have done so much, uh, both on screen for Twilight and off of screen for Twilight promoting it. I think uh, the biggest thing is not shooting the movies, uh, any movie for that matter, but it's the promotional tour that some of these people have to go on. They have to go from uh, country to country, state to state, uh, promoting this thing, and they have to go virtually everywhere. It seems like they don't know where they are from one day to the next. I think the promotional tour for something like a movie or a book uh, definitely takes its toll on someone and it's uh, a bigger deal than actually shooting the thing. As I mentioned, all the films have finished up. So, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see where part two picks up where part one left off. The final book is about a thousand pages. If you've read this thing in its entirety, uh, boy, you have a lot of time on your hands because it's a big book. It's the longest book of the series and I actually uh, picked up a copy of the e-books and read uh, summaries of them and uh, you know enjoyed them so I can only imagine how much you enjoyed reading the thousand page book and that's why they had to break it up of course into two separate films Harry Potter's final film actually was broken up into two parts earlier a few months back and this one broken up into two parts and that seems to be some kind of a trend that Hollywood is getting itself into now instead of releasing just one single film because there's so much detail in novels and different things happening in life nowadays uh, events and everything, they have to release two parts. So that not only allows them to keep you on the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen from part one to part two, wondering where part two is going to pick up where part one left off, but it allows them to, to generate more money and, uh, you know, kind of figure out where they're going to go from here. So, you know, I don't see Twilight Breaking Down Part 2 being much different from Twilight Breaking Down Part 1, uh, but it's going to be emotional for a lot of people who have been excited when these films get released. I mean, you purchase your tickets online, you wait months for the sequel to come out, now you haven't got to wait anymore because they're all done. And the actors themselves, actors and actresses, both respectively, uh, definitely uh, were emotional about it. They were sad about it because they spent so many years on this and a lot of effort went into it, winning a lot of global uh, Golden Globes and Academy Awards for everything they've done. So, I think that it's it's definitely a project that's going to be remembered for years to come. It will definitely be talked about for the next 25 years as one of the most successful film franchises we have seen in the last decade. It'll be featured on a look back at some of Hollywood's most successful theatrical releases. If they ever do a biography or some kind of special for the movie network or something in your area, you're bound to see that one pop up. And it's going to do well with Blu-ray and DVD sales. I know a number of different businesses are allowing you the option to pre-order the Twilight film. And I'm sure you already have. It drops on February 11th. There's going to be tons of exclusive features. And I believe it's available on two discs, both on DVD and Blu-ray, too. You have the option of buying a single disc. And you have the option of buying an extra disc, which is loaded with a bunch of uh, special features and exclusive commentaries and interviews. And if you've actually heard some of the interviews or seen any of the videos on YouTube, the trailer is on our Twitter page at HCW Entertainment Channel and Clark One. They describe this film as a lot of things. What would you describe Twilight, the entire saga, in your own words? Tweet it to me at HCW Entertainment Channel and Clark One. We are following a lot of the stars from the Twilight saga. And uh, let me know what you would describe this thing as. You know, the uh, critics definitely describe it as a lot of things, but what would you describe it as in your own words? 
Leave us a comment here on YouTube.com, Jonathan Clark 22, where you can find the Twilight Breaking Dawn theatrical release version of the show in our video blog archives. And let me know what you would describe this thing as, because I know critics definitely go above and beyond the requirements of describing things, putting a lot of detail into it. So you be your own critic and tell me what you would call this, because it's been called a lot of stuff, and I think a lot of fans have become obsessed with it. I'm not going to hold anything back when I say that. I saw a piece, actually, on Entertainment Tonight where a fan had had her entire back uh, tattooed of a poster of the Twilight series, and that was absolutely taking it one step a bit too far, I think, and uh, actually Taylor Lautner actually wanted to meet that fan who had become obsessed with it enough to actually get a tattoo of the poster on her back. I don't think I would ever go that far with something like wrestling or something that I have followed my entire life, like Nickelodeon or Disney or something. That is a bit dramatic, I think. It's just a way of getting attention, and a lot of fans with this thing definitely uh, do a lot to get attention. So a lot of Twilight fans definitely deserve a lot of credit for putting this film over the top, and it was because of the fans, if anything, uh, this movie was so successful, and so much detail uh, got put into it from movie to movie. As I mentioned, you know, the first one looked like a movie that was shot probably in about a day, two days maximum. Uh, they shot part of the movie in Canada. I believe they shot uh, a certain portion of it in the States and a certain portion of it in the United Kingdom. A lot of different locations uh, for this one. And, you know, there are a lot of statistics released on the Internet about the success of the film and a lot of fun facts, too. If you actually pull it up on Google, you'd be surprised some of the facts you'd find out about the film because there's a lot of stuff about this. A phenomenal soundtrack was actually released for Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 1. Bruno Mars was on there along with a number of well-known artists who have a number of very successful albums already released. We play some of the artists here on the show. I'm sure you've heard a song by Bruno Mars once or twice at least in our video archives and our YouTube channel. He has a song, Let It Rain, for that one. And uh, there's another one I think called A Thousand Years. I'm not sure who it's by, but it's worth your while picking up the soundtrack and actually listening to the compilation of music for this. Not only for Twilight Breaking Down, but the previous films too. There's a soundtrack for virtually every installment of the film. Uh, pick them up in a CD uh, box set if you can, if you get the opportunity to, wherever music is sold, because it's a tremendous compilation right from the first film right until the end. I can't put the music over enough. Uh, Lincoln Park actually had a song called Leave Out All the Rest uh, for the original Twilight film, which was featured in the credits. And I think ever since then, a lot of uh, celebrities and uh, musical artists wanted to jump on board, not only promoting it, but offering musical talent uh, to it as 